Welcome listeners to another 10 minutes with Coach Tracy, which we know always lasts a little more than 10 minutes. <laughs> but I was um, telling Tracy before we got on that I want to talk today about boundaries. It's kind of a new concept for me. It was something that I couldn't really grab onto until after a retreat I went on with Tracy and Self Made You. But before we go there, I want to kind of circle back to our last coaching session on doing divorce different. And, you know, we were talking about self-love and I think I, I had said something like, I just want to be a person that jumps in the pool with my grandson and doesn't worry about what I look like in the swimming suit and how what I think of myself stops me from living a beautiful, I mean, I have a beautiful life, but it, it affects me. And I think it's really common to women. And it's interesting because I also was telling Tracy, I'm dealing with the respiratory thing. So I've been lying around, laying in bed, watching YouTubes. And I happened to come across um, an old um, Oprah interview. And she was talking about herself and how there was one moment in time where she had gained eight pounds and she had been invited to John, Don Johnson's. This one, he was like the, the mm -hmm. big thing, the handsome Don Johnson. She had been invited to a party at his house and was planning to go until she stood on the scale and she was eight pounds heavier. And she said, well, I don't look good enough. I'm not going. Mm -hmm. And she didn't go. And I, oh, that like hit me in the heart because I thought I was the only person that did that. I mean, I am not kidding. There are things that I don't go to because I don't think I look good. Sometimes I miss out on a church service or my husband's saying, hey, do you want to go out to dinner? Because I'm thinking, eh, I don't really look that good or I'm feeling frumpy. And so Tracy, this message is so important to me. And I wish I could say that I jump in a pool and don't worry about what I look like in my swimming suit, but I don't yet. I'm a woman learning how to be that woman. Yeah. And so I think if people listening, whatever it is that you're dealing with, be aware of it, right? Like be aware of what you're feeling and know that you can change the thought behind it. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know, Tracy, is there any thought that you could maybe share that someone could borrow to help them through self-doubt or... Yeah. Well, I think, I mean, you just illustrated it so beautifully. Like you just said, you know, I'm not the woman who jumps into the pool, you know, without a care in the world, without caring, you know, what it is that I look like or what it is that, you know, I weigh. I'm not there yet. Right. And what you went on to say was I'm becoming that woman just notice the difference in how you feel when you are operating from a belief that you know that sounds very judgmental like i can't or i'm not worthy of attending something i'm not worthy of getting into a pool without a care in the world like there's a whole lot of judgment wrapped up in that that doesn't feel very good and when it doesn't feel very good, you're not going to show up as your best self. You're not going to be, you know, actively working on the thoughts, actively allowing feelings to be there because you're human. You won't. Right. You will right. just shut down and you will start to create like compounded suffering. Mm -hmm. So the suffering that you're going through right now of judgment just continues to get compounded. So the progress is in the fact that you noticed it's in the fact that you noticed how you were feeling how you were talking to yourself mm -hmm. you noticed that it was coming from a place of judgment so that's the the most important first step and you can make some quantum leaps with that one step of just noticing and from there you started to like kind of change it ever so slightly. It right. didn't go from, you know, I'm, I'm the woman who 
cares desperately about what the scale says to I don't care anymore. Right. Like, that's not what you did. You changed it to I'm becoming the woman who. Yeah. And that's a truth for you. And that's important to like emphasize right now. Whatever you are deciding to think on purpose has got to be believable. Yes. And that's very believable for you. You work, I know, as your coach, you work every darn day on this. You right. are becoming that woman. And you're never not going to be coming that next best version. So there is not going to be that day where you're like, okay, I'm there. No, <laughs> because becoming self-made means that you're constantly optimizing. There yeah. is no finish line. So yes, you are becoming that woman. And that feels so good. That's your truth. And I know that's my truth too. And I know that I feel it's not like this sense of like, you know, excitement or um, hopefulness, or it's not even necessarily like this, I've done it. It's the sense of like, of what is, it's just the sense of acceptance. Right. It slows everything down. There is no more panic. There is no more rush. It's like, this is what is. I am becoming the person who doesn't, you know, say no to things because of the way I look or, right. or what a scale says. Um, but that takes work, you guys. It takes work. So you've got to prove that truth to be true. So what kind of actions do you have that substantiate that truth for you? So it's, you know, the mind math can be solved at every single level. And it's important to understand the components of the mind math. It becomes kind of an operating system that Lisa is a product of. Um, and she activates that every single day. And that's, and that's why she can honestly say she's becoming that woman. And that thought, that truth serves her immensely. Well, and I have the opportunity <laughs> coming up, so I'll be able to inform you and this will hold me a little bit accountable because we are meeting on December 16th to celebrate my grandson's birthday. We're meeting in between our homes at a hotel and I'm going to let you, and there's going to be a lot of people there. <laughs> I will let you know Awesome. How that happens. And it might be that I don't go in. I don't know, but I'm going to keep you posted so that maybe we can kind of take this journey together, listeners. So, so I want to, I just didn't want to let that go because it's so important to me and it's such an area that I'm, I'm growing in. And I, um, I just think it's important. So yeah. thank you, Tracy. I think that is very helpful. And so now we're kind of switching gears, but not really. We're going to talk about boundaries. And I feel like, I don't know that I cared enough about myself to set up boundaries before. Does that mm -hmm. sound appropriate? Because I couldn't oh, even. For sure. Yeah. And you guys, this is recent. Like I just went on this retreat with self-made you and I've always just kind of skirted around the issue of boundaries, but um, Tracy had a worksheet and I went through it again last night and she has, um, she's letting me share this information with you. So I'm going to, I'm going to create a worksheet that covers how to set up your boundaries on my website. So listeners, you can go there and grab it. Um, by the time this episode comes out, it will be there, but, um, <coughs> excuse me. Oh. <laughs> the thing that was, um, amazing was that once I sat down and thought through it and valued myself, I realized it really wasn't that hard. I don't know why I was circling with the idea that it was hard, but it isn't hard to set up your boundaries. And so, Trace, I just, I have my little notebook from our retreat from a couple of weeks ago. Yep. And um, I'm going to kind of just read through things. You know, I think <coughs> it's basically what's okay, what's not okay. And you can set boundaries up with yourself or someone else. Mm -hmm. Not really difficult. What's okay? What's not okay? Yeah. 
You know, and I can tell you that in our family, one thing I was thinking about, we um, can fall into not talking nice to each other. And I don't know if that's common or not, but it happens in my house where we're really kind people and then we can just say horrible things. So, you know, one thing that you can do is you can, what I learned is you can set up the boundary and you can declare it and you can tell people, or you can just, this one I just set up in my head where I came up with, you know what, I'm a child of God, you're a child of God, so we can't talk that way. And then I just walk away. And so far, everyone's just kind of, hmm, I don't really know, but it seems to be changing things. And it's a boundary that I've set up because I care about myself mm -hmm. and I want to be spoken to well. Mm -hmm. And I want to speak to other people well, too, because I know that I play a role in this as well. So, <coughs> excuse me. That's what I learned about how to know the first step in setting up a boundary. And then... <coughs> And I think boundaries. it's important to really remember that boundaries ultimately are created for you. Right. Like it's, it is kind of a operating system for the results that you want to create for you. It isn't a manipulation tactic. It isn't an ultimate. Right. It's not in an effort to control someone else. So that's a really, really important distinction yes. that needs to be made up front that you understand that boundaries are created so that you get the results that you want from your life. The, you want to get the right kind of feelings. Like you can go back and check yourself. In Lisa's example, she probably, when she speaks words that are unkind, she does not feel very good. She feels completely out of alignment from, you know, her values. And so she knows that she wants to feel in alignment with her spiritual values. And so she's made this decision to have a boundary for herself. It's not trying to control other people. This is a boundary that she has set so that she gets the results from her life that she wants. So really, thank really you. important distinction. Thank you for saying that because that's in my notes, but I would have glossed over it. <laughs> but, you know, and I think another thing that you said, a boundary is different than a request in that um, the request doesn't have consequences. And in my situation, it is a boundary because the consequences, I stop the conversation and I leave. That's mm -hmm. the consequence. Yeah. You know, so it's that simple. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, in the consequence again, it, that too ties back to you. It's right. always something that, you know, when this happens, I will do this. Now this does not have to even be spoken. This can be right. decided in your own mind. So when somebody says something unkind to me, I leave the room. You don't have to declare that out loud. That's right. just the boundary that you've set for yourself. Um, you can, if you want to say the boundary out loud so that you feel like you're kind of managing expectations. So people aren't left like scratching their head, like what just happened? Right. <laughs> you certainly can. You certainly can. But I would say, check yourself and really be honest about what it is that you're trying to accomplish with saying this out loud. Are you genuinely trying to manage expectations from a place that's aligned with your values, like right. to communicate with people? Or are you saying this out loud because you want them to fall into some sort of line of, you know, the way you want them to be operating. Right. You're trying to manipulate and control them. Right. Check yourself and see where that's coming from. That's very, very good because there may be a little of that involved. <laughs> you are human. You are human. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, you know, as, as am I, I notice it all the time with my right. Family. So it's right. just, if you're wanting to live like that optimal life, you guys, this is what it looks like. It yep. doesn't mean you're you're doing it perfectly. You're and doing it very not. imperfectly, but yet you give yourself the grace that you're human and that you want to, you decide. And even though in all of my imperfections, I'm still going to be on this pursuit of optimization. Yep. 
Yeah, this is this is all part of the fun, right? I mean, mm-hmm. it's the growing that never ends. Amen. Amen. But it keeps getting more fulfilling and it keeps yeah. growing your life. And um, okay, so now I just want to look at I'm looking at the worksheet and I said I'm gonna create one based on this, but I mean, just the first thing that you had me do was to um, list out areas where you might need to create some boundaries in your life. Where do you tend to feel uncomfortable or frustrated when it comes to yourself and others in your life? And, you know, it's funny when you actually sit and think about things that make you frustrated, Mm -hmm. it did some things kind of the spotlight shined. And I thought about how you know, I have some grown kids. I have one kid that's still at home and boy, I, um, do everything when people come home, mama makes the meals, mama. And at this point in our lives, I think that I always thought that was how I showed my kids that I love them. Mm -hmm. And that's not, not necessarily true. I mean, it's one thing that I can do, but I also, can take care of myself and ask them for help so that I actually have time to connect with them. So, um, you know, I was kind (coughs) of thinking of this as I was thinking about Thanksgiving, which all my plans have gone out the window because of this respiratory infection that I have. So no one's coming to my house. (coughs) And of course this will air after Thanksgiving. But I was thinking about how, um, that was something that I didn't even think about that's frustrating that I need to set a boundary up. And even things like I could spend all my money on things that my kids need and not get, you know, something that I might need. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. And, and it makes me feel um, peace and relief to realize it. Like I value myself. Mm -hmm you know, to realize that and go, oh, that is something that I can set a boundary and I can do it different. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I think that ultimately that question um, is going, you're going to get out of it what you put into it. So if you look at that question and you just stop at the one knee jerk reactive, you know, thought you have, you're not going to get a lot out of that question. If you really sit and and you get honest and you think very exhaustively, like, you know, personally, professionally, spiritually, socially, like take yourself through all of those areas of your life and answer that question. That's what it looks like to really invest in understanding yourself. And the what you will get from that is a level of acceptance that you've never experienced. So I strongly encourage your listeners to download the worksheet and then invest the time Mm -hmm. answering these questions. Honestly, it pays dividends. Yeah. You know, and I think I also um, learned some boundaries for myself and, you know, the sickness that I have, um, is probably because I didn't set up my boundaries. I was not giving myself the rest that I know I need. Mm -hmm. Um, I was just going a million miles an hour. I had had uh, a cold for like a month and I just kept going. Never like stopped to think, maybe I need to take a day off and rest. And so um, I actually am going to set up one day every week where I do nothing. Like I'm going to have my meals prepared. I'm going to just kind of sit with myself and go on a walk and yeah. not even do a hard workout, you know, yeah. just, How so it, it was very, I mean, listeners, uh, honestly, I want you to, to download this cause it's going to be so helpful. And then the next, you know, question talks about, um, unspoken boundaries and spoken ones, which we talked about. Um, and then just to, uh, think through like what the deal breaker is going to be if you don't, you know, moving forward, I guess I don't really know if I don't, (laughs) if I don't rest, I get sick. You know, Mm -hmm. that's kind of a deal breaker. Then I can't live. I can't do fun things when I'm sick and I can't serve people. Um, So this worksheet, then the next thing is to just get specific 
and then the consequences, what happens when the boundary is broken yep. is important. And it seemed so um, difficult until I sat down and did it. And that example with when I'm spoken to poorly in my family to just say, you know what, I'm a child of God and then to walk away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's pretty simple. Yeah. And, but if you don't walk away, so if you don't fulfill the consequence, then you can clearly illustrate what does happen, you know, right. and then you can see the kind of results that are created in your life when the back and forth starts to happen. You don't walk away. And now this kind of sparring, not, you know, it doesn't even have to be in like some hateful sort of way, but right. it's just kind of this back and forth. And, you know, the, those words beget the same kind of words, that energy begets the same kind of energy. You're not, you know, you're operating maybe from some sort of fear-based saboteur type voice right. going on in your head. Guess what you're bringing out in the other person? They're going to match that. Right. So you really want to tap into that prodigy brain because that's the energy that you're modeling and the people around you will match that. And so it's, there's so many consequences to not, you know, fulfilling that boundary to really honoring that boundary. And I think again, doing the work to clearly state what that is, is only going to serve you. And so um, the questions on here are very purposeful. And like I said, it will pay dividends if you invest the time into it. Yep. And, you know, I think the thing that was so meaningful to me and meant so much to me is I was taking the time to take care of myself. Yeah. Yep. I talk about self-care left and right. Well, what is better self-care than taking care of yourself and mm -hmm. setting up some boundaries and um, loving yourself enough that you will, you know, do a little bit of work, yep. take a little time to do this for yourself. So I think it's like the greatest form of self-care. Absolutely. But I think to that point, it's worth saying self-care comes in all sorts of shapes and sizes. So if you're noticing as, as Lisa saying that some sort of judgmental thought, like, Oh man, here, I thought I was good at self-care, but yet I've never set up boundaries, right? Like you're right. human. It's <laughs> very likely that you just had that thought you were focused on other forms of self-care. And this is just yeah. yet another one that you get to kind of add to the toolbox and try it out. It, it may or may not work for you, but it's just another great tool to take care of yourself. So um, don't judge, just really kind of trip the trigger of your prodigy brain and get curious about what it would be like to implement this tool. So good, Tracy. We're going to end it there. We've only doubled the amount of time that we were supposed to. But as always, thank you so much for joining me. And your information will be in the show notes because if people need coaching, which I think everyone does, I think that they should contact Tracy at Self Made You. Yeah, we've got some really exciting stuff coming for 2023 that's available to absolutely everyone. And love it. I highly recommend taking a look at that. And, uh, taking care of yourself through learning how to manage your mind. Amen. Well, I'll, I'll report back next month on how jumping in the pool went. <laughs> Thanks, Tracy. Bye-bye.